So for your C, your D, and your E, we're breaking those down in terms of your uh, inotropic, chronotropic, and dromotropics here. So I break down C into two categories. You have your calcium channel blockers, which is an anti-hypertensive, as well as your cardiac glycoside, which is your digoxin, which is one, an inotropic drug. It really helps you uh, to contract very forcefully. And um, digoxin is also a negative chronotropic. So let's break it down into two things here. That's not too straight, I know. All right, all right. Not a good drawer. Okay. So for your C, your cardiac glycosides, your CG, also known as your digoxin, um, this we already know is a forceful inotropic drug. So your digoxin, your dig, okay, your digoxin, we can just put dig, how about that, dig, you can see that from there, is that inotropic drug. Um, it causes that forceful contraction, that atrial kick. Huh, to help those ventri I'm sorry, those atriums squeeze out that last portion of ketchup from the ketchup bottle, okay? So just like if you have ketchup or a toothpaste tube and you're really trying to get that last portion yeah, of uh, ketchup out of the bottle, that's what your um, your your uh, your inotropic drugs are doing. That's what your dig is doing. It's helping that atrial kick to kick out that last portion of blood from those atriums. It's also bringing down the heart rate here. Okay? Because in atrial fibrillation, we have way too much excitability from that SA node, I'm sorry, from the pacemaker cells in the atrium. The SA node is uh, doing its best, but sometimes the SA node breaks down mainly because of hypoxia or sometimes drug toxicity. So there's a lot of electrical impulses coming from all over the atrium and DIG just helps contract those atriums smoother, okay? Now, DIG, as far as, let's see here. DIG, DIG, is as far as dromotropic, it's causing those impulses to become diminished as well from that AV node. So we're bringing down that electrical conductivity and causing those atriums to squeeze better. So a few things with DIG is you have to monitor your patient's apical heart rate. Make sure you're listening with your stethoscope to the apical heart rate right under the um, fourth, fifth intercostal space for one whole minute. If you don't listen to the apical heart rate for a whole minute, you're not going to be able to give the drug because that's one of the prerequisites. You have to make sure that your patient is, um, is stable to give the drug to. And you want to make sure that you're trending your patient. If your patient is on DIG, then they're going to probably be on a warfarin 
type of anticoagulant to make sure that they're not making blood clots in the heart in terms of in the atriums from their atrial fibrillation as well. So, a few prerequisites. You need to make sure that you're watching the apical heart rate, that you know your toxicity of digoxin, which therapeutic levels are between 0.8 and 2 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, a patient comes in for weakness and the patient is in um, dig toxicity, mainly because we've given the patient loop diuretics like borosamide and Lasix, which we're getting into next. But patients in heart failure, we're giving them loop diuretics, which is a potassium wasting drug, wasting the potassium. So anytime potassium goes down in the body and you're taking DIG, you have an increased chance of becoming DIG toxic. So some test questions and some NCLEX questions that uh, love to pop up is assessing your patient for DIG toxicity. Anything above 2.0 nanograms. So your patient has a 1.5 nanogram per milliliter. Uh, would you give digoxin? The answer is yes. Your patient has a dig level of 1.9. Would you give digoxin? Uh, according to my uh, nursing tests, yes. The answer was yes, because the patient was not yet toxic. Obviously, you need to check your potassium levels and your apical heart rate, as well as the, uh, the, the rhythm on the monitor. Is your patient actively in atrial fibrillation? So make sure you guys know these before you give this cardiac glycoside digoxin. Okay. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say. I forgot, but I'll think about it. So next is our calcium channel blockers, also a hypo, sorry, a hypertensive medication. We give it to patients who have hypertension. So let me stop the video and then we'll start it back up with calcium channels here.